All right, everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Impact Lounge Impact Wrestling Review. It is your boy, BQ, and I am back. And I hope you guys can bear with me a little. This is obviously the first podcast I've hosted in about eight months, maybe even longer than that. So bear with me, but we're going to do our best to get through this episode. I got Trent with me in the place to be. Trent, what's going on, man? What's up, man? What's going on? It's good to have you back, BQ, man. Hell yeah. Feels, uh, feels good to be back. I can't lie to you. I'm a little nervous doing this, but <laughs> we're getting back in the saddle. This was a pretty good episode of Impact, but I do want to ask you, did you watch the uh, Night You Can't Miss last night? I did. I actually did jump on. I ended up being home. I didn't go out till later, so I, I popped on just on the on the app, and it was cool, man. I, uh, I was really impressed with it. I did catch it. I was, I was really happy I did because initially I was going to watch it on delay probably today or, or a couple of days from now, but... I was able to catch it live, and I'm, I'm really glad I jumped on. I really liked it. Yeah, as we're talking right now, Digital Destruction is going on, so uh, we'll check that out later on Twitch. But it was a pretty good show. Uh, for the most part, I enjoy the matches. I couldn't get into Moose versus Luchasaurus. It was just a bunch of back-and-forth moves, and no one had any momentum. Uh, yeah. I, was, I was actually super bored during that match. I can't say I missed uh, Billy Gunn and... Joey Ryan not being on the card. I, I really had no interest to watch that match. No, me either, I guess, man. Uh, I actually went to the bathroom, came back, and D'Lo was in a ring, and I was actually really confused what was going on there. So I asked some people on Twitter, and they let me know. But overall, good show. Those The uh, the audio quality continues to be horrendous for these uh, these specials. I don't know what's really going on with that. I don't know what it is, man. I just – it's – to me, I always feel like the, the, the live crowd just has never mic'd as well as it, as it is, because like I said, I'm I'm in Philly for the re- show about the review. I'm in the crowd on that one, and and this was a much louder. You could you could tell it was a little louder because there was more things to pop for, but it it's still not as loud as it was live, man. It, I just feel like they that is a focus that the company needs to do is is really look at miking that crowd and really relaying that to the viewing audience because it is a it is a way rowdier crowd than it comes off sometimes. I can tell watching on TV that this Philly crowd is a lot. A lot more rowdy. They have a lot more energy. Yeah. The audio is obviously very compressed. I don't know if you know the the crowd is mic'd or not, but the audio is compressed, and it seems like whoever does the audio mixing prioritizes the play by play being nice and clear and everything else because you can't even hear the wrestlers' entrance music half the time. But oh, I what know. I was actually referring to was the the play by play, the audio quality with that. It was it was staticky, it was distorted, and it just seems to be like that just about every show. So it's it's getting a little old. Uh, one thing I would like to say about these specials, I kind of wish they would just... Uh, I don't have a problem with Josh on play-by-play, but I wish they would bring some new life in. And for these these Twitch shows, these these uh, Impact Plus shows, like bring bring in some new blood for the play-by-play. Like give us just just something different, so we don't just get the Josh Matthews overload every time there's something that has to do with Impact Wrestling. It would it would just be kind of nice. I do like Scott Demore a lot better than Don Callis, though. I do like Scott a lot too, uh, especially because he it, it is like he's, I agree. It, if it would be nice if it was maybe Scott and somebody else, because then it's like okay for these specials we get a whole different team. And like you said, so it's not so much of a Josh Matthews overload. Not that Josh is terrible or anything. It just it separates what these shows are from the weekly show, and I would I would enjoy that too. Yeah, absolutely. That's so maybe that'll happen in due time. So, uh, but overall. Pretty solid show, and uh, we'll see how Digital Destruction comes out. But let's talk this episode of Impact. I'm finally caught up. You know, I did fall behind quite a bit. Last last week's episode was excellent, so I wish I could have hopped on with you then and talked to you about that one. That was a really excellent show, but this Very was much. also a really good show. This started off with Ace Austin versus Cousin Jake. You and I are both Cousin Jake fans, so Big time. Uh, I was excited for that. Um, and I do like Ace Austin. I, I've been kind of seeing some people say, oh, I don't see what's special in him. Like, I think he's a pretty special athlete, personally. Uh, you, you you could be hit or miss on the, the gimmick thing. It doesn't really bother me. Uh, I, th- I think it was a really good match. They actually got some time, which the matches on Impact just be seeming, they just seem to get time. And that does wonders for these wrestlers, especially guys like Falaba we'll talk about later, who started off kind of as this comedy character. And once they started giving him time to wrestle, you know, it really, it really helps these guys. It really helps the program. I mean, we know now that every match we're going to get is is quality as opposed to, 
you know, the tail end of the the Dixie and Billy Corgan era, era we were getting the, you know, three, four minute matches that mm-hmm. meant absolutely nothing. So this was a good one. Uh, what do you got overall on uh, Jake Dina versus A's Austin? Jake to me is he is your future of any companies at right now. Like I, I work with him really closely at AAW and um, the dude is, you can put him in any situation. And one of the things I pointed out was that the, the Dina role that he's in now has really gotten to brush up his character spot, like his facial expressions, his overall uh, crowd interaction, his demeanor, the way he carries himself because of that acting he's forced to do in those skits and kind of playing off of Cody Diener, who's very animated. So D- Jake's the, he's a much better storyteller now than he, I think he ever had been. Uh, on the on the other side of that, Ace Austin, like you said, a great athlete. He is he's a phenomenal competitor, and, and I like that he has a gimmick. I know some people are like, "What is he Gambit or something?" You know what's it supposed to be? I'm like, the cool thing is he's he has a gimmick and he sticks very true to it. The thing with Ace, I want to see is way is more personality come through. I want him to get some vignettes where he can kind of brush up his personality chops and then relay that into the ring. But mentioning the time that you met, that you said, yeah, I feel like every, like no match on impact is less than like 10 minutes at this point. And I, that's plenty of time to hit first gear, hit second gear, hit that third gear where you can start really feeding your story and then hit that fourth gear where you can just take it home. Like it, I love that. I love that we are getting plenty of time to, to, to arc a story nowadays, you know, and that's cool, especially with two young guys like this. Cousin Jake looks like a professional wrestler. Hundred percent. That's another thing too. Tremendous physique, and can do a lot in the ring. I was a little hesitant with the the Diener gimmick because I wasn't familiar with it until watching one of the one night one night only specials, and you know I've always known him as Jake something right uh, on the independent scene and. When I saw the whole Diener thing, I was like, what is this? At first, I thought it was, was like a corny, bad comedy type of gimmick, which it turns out they're actually pretty funny together. And uh, they have grown on me a little bit as far as that that gimmick goes. It, it took me a while to warm up to it, but um, I'm, I'm feeling it. And uh, excellent match. Desi Hit Squad comes down, costs Cousin Jake the match. So they're kind of doing this Desi Hit Squad uh, Diener's thing, which mm-hmm. is, is going to be kind of dead in the water because of the presentation of the Desi Hit Squad. There's, I think, there's been plenty of opportunities to present them a little bit better, but it just seems like they they ultimately lose all their feuds. So it just kind of seems like the Diener thing. They're just going to run through the Desi Hit Squad, which I hope not. I would hope to get a better match than that. But did this take any way anything away from the match for you? To where, you know, these guys come down and it's a screwy finish and we just don't get that that clean finish. I didn't mind it because I do like that they're actually giving the Deaners and the Hit Squad a something to work with. Because for the longest time, the DC Hit Squad didn't get anything to work with besides just being fodder, right? And now it's like, okay, cool. You guys are you're interfering in matches. You're, you're getting involved. Like there's a feud building here. And as anybody knows who follows Jake and Rohit or Hakim Zayn, as he might be known other places, they have they wrestle each other a lot. They're they're really tight on you know on the circuit. So these guys have good chemistry. I could definitely see that being blended over to something, especially because you know it is more of a storyline vignette based gimmick. Both of them, you know, in, in a way. So this is it's kind of a cool way to tie them up with something, give them something to sink their teeth into. Uh, you know, Rohit did get a win. Uh, oh, Desi Escobar did get a win a couple weeks ago. So it was, you know, it's like we are starting to see a little something turn the corner. I'd, I'd like it to go the distance. Don't just kill this off in a week. You know, but, you know, give them some back and forth. I'd like to see this ping pong a little bit, and then, you know, then you can move these guys on. But, but yeah, it's gonna take some trading wins back and forth. They can't just be like next week the Deaners just go in and take them out for as revenge. And okay, cool, we're done. It can't be that. Like we're gonna we're gonna build it. Let's put our, let's sink our teeth into this. Yeah, absolutely. And locally here at Glory Pro, uh, Rohit and Jake do work together routinely, you know, yep. usually in the main event. So they do have a lot of chemistry together. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we uh, see this on TV and Rohit can do a lot more things than I think he's necessarily given the opportunity to show on TV. I'm still trying to come around on, on Raj Singh. Um, I just I just liked Gersinder Singh a lot. I'm still I'm still coming around on him, but, you know, he does give him a 
a powerhouse and we'll see we'll see where it goes and see if it's it's something that's long lasting yeah uh, hopefully something that's not well on raj off. on the raj singh aspect you know i i pointed this out a couple of weeks ago on the review um you know he's he's the most greenest out of all of them. he's he's pretty new he's pretty young but i've noticed this and if you look if you watch in 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 uh, recent matches he's a great base because he's a he's a great transition guy during a match he's a good guy to take the power move so Ricky can get in. He's a good guy to take a beating or take the pin or base for a certain um, for a certain moment so they can transition to, uh, to the momentum to something else. He's he's very good when he's utilized for that, especially as a young guy. It's a good place to be. I think while Rohit's more of the captain of the team, he's really well used as that that transitioning force during a match. And I think that's going to be his strength until he gets just gets more experience. He's still pretty young. All right, yeah. so it's pretty clear we're gonna these two teams are gonna lock horns here pretty soon. Yeah. We'll, we'll Spe- see how it comes out. Speaking uh, of like, on TV, BQ, I'm I'm front and center on TV this whole episode. I don't know if you saw, I am I am right there. Great hair day and everything. Great Here's hair day. You know, I haven't seen you, but <laughs> that kind of brings me to a point. I don't know if the impact cameramen think it's cute or or what, but it seems like every single episode there is a they purposely put the regulars on TV. Oh, for sure. I mean, there are some, right? That are there at every show, um, you know, the, and and those guys, those guys always get on. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I know. Uh, yeah, like with with certain zoom ins and stuff. You mean, right? Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I, I mean I every that. every episode, and I don't know if they're trying to, to play up. Oh, we got these loyal people who fought. Like we get it. I mean, it's yeah. it's always the the opening, you know, <laughs> the you know within the first thirty seconds. There's there's the guy with the jacket. Uh, you know, my good buddy Miguel when he's there, he's always on TV. You know, Chef was always on TV. These guys who are like regulars, they it just seems like the camera just has to be on them for whatever reason. It's obviously done on purpose. I don't really understand what that's all about, but they they swapped it up a little more in the last uh, two sets of tapings. I noticed, but the thing I, is, the, those guys are always front row. Like like um, Bill, the the moose moose uh, vest guy, he's at every show, he's at every taping. So they, I mean, it's almost like familiarity. They're gonna just get him on TV because he's animated he's front and center you can't you almost can't deny putting him on tv because it's so easy to get because <laughs> right there yeah, absolutely I, i've talked to him once i met yeah. years ago in orlando talked to him yeah. uh, briefly i did see you on tv um a while ago when they were filling in uh, i think the last set of tapings in new york i did see you yeah i'm on uh, this one yeah yeah I'm, I'm like literally hard cam to the right you could see me and my girl were just right there so uh, it's been nice. People have been, some of the impact loungers have been, uh, leaving comments like, Hey, Trent saw you on TV. Saw you here. Saw you there. So it's always a cool little self mark out moment for me. BQ. Just what can see, I say? I never got that. <laughs> I went to Orlando quite a bit and I never, I mean, I would see myself, uh, in sitting within the crowd, but I never got, I never got that zoom up or anything like that. Maybe, maybe one of these days we'll see. You'll get there. You'll get there. <laughs> Stick not around this guys. business. You'll get there, kid. Yeah, not on their level, <laughs> level yet, obviously. Uh, let's move into the next match. This was Taya Valkyrie versus Rosemary. This was a non-title match. They're doing this whole thing where Taya does want to defend the title unless she absolutely has to, which is fine because, you know, thank God we're far removed from the days of random title matches. And they do happen from time to time, but, yep. you know, there was a time towards the, uh, even in a Jeff Jarrett Global Force, that little mess for about a year just these random random title shots of people who weren't um, deserving at all so at least it's cool to say hey this person's you know there's a non-title match this week but Taya took on Rosemary the match was okay for what it was Uh, I was definitely thrown for for a loop because I was I felt like they were going to team Sue up with Rosemary very similar to what Allie did tagging up with Sue. That that's kind of where I thought this was going. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'm going to get into a little into some thoughts about Sue here in a little bit. But overall, the match was what it was. Uh, Rosemary uses the spear to her repertoire now, which I I I've never liked the spear from anybody she, or just in general, like just in general. I don't I don't think it works with the females at all. I don't I don't think it looks very devastating. I I think the only person who I enjoy seeing it from is probably Moose. Oh, Moose throws a great spear. No yeah. doubt about it. No doubt. If anyone's going to throw it in 2019, I'd I see Moose doing it. But yeah, you're right, though. I mean, nobody's really, nobody's got a great one, especially yeah, the females, but it was always that go-to, especially in ECW, if you're an old ECW fan, it was always the first move 
when the girls would start fighting and they just spear first and then start pulling hair or brawling, whatever, you know? So it's such a, it, it's almost like, I feel like it's not like it's beyond, it's below Rosemary to do that. It's like, wow, you're, you're a technical wrestler. You're not just cat fighting. So why, why go for the cat fight move in, in that kind of, in that kind of moment, you know, just go for the brawl instead of the spear. Well, I, I have to believe with Rosemary because she's still working back into ring shape, you know, uh, Maybe there's a, a reason she is going to this move right now because mm-hmm. uh, she's she's used it instead of the Red Wedding uh, to win a couple of matches. So uh, maybe th- maybe there's a reason for it. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Just easier on her body at this time. Could very well be that. Yeah, exactly. Because probably to do the Red Wedding, she has to push off, you know, uh, mm-hmm. her injured. I don't remember. Might have been ACL. Don't remember exactly. But so match match was what it was. Uh, the big talking point about this is the music hits, Father James Mitchell comes down, and he's got Jessica Havoc in tow. And this is crazy because earlier, OVE was cutting a promo, and I kept thinking to myself, like, wow, just I was picturing Jessica Havoc or, or uh, what's her name, Nevaeh? Nevaeh was, Christ? Yeah, yeah Jake, Jake's uh, I was wife. picturing them in the background, like, you know, gosh, it would be really, OVE's getting kind of big, but, you know, uh, size-wise, but it would be kind of nice to add the female in there and... um Sure enough, you... Jessica Havoc comes out, and uh, she gets a pretty good pop when she comes out. Yeah. And, you know, she did, it's kind of silly with Rosemary trying to throw the fists at her and her catching them. It was very uh, superhero-ish, you know, something we see on, on a, some kind of silly superhero show, whatever. But yeah, other than that, you know, takes out Rosemary, and for good measure, takes out Taya as well. And I thought it was really funny when she was like, oh, hell no. And uh, <laughs> try to get away. I uh, uh, I noticed earlier in the night uh, when OVE was out, or, or was it later? I'm sorry. Yeah, when OVE came out later, uh, Josh even mentioned he's like he's like they you know something about how they don't they don't have a girl in the group. Somebody either Josh or Don mentioned how they, there's no female in OVE, and I was like, oh, I mean, you would think it would have been a layup to have them to have havoc in there, but it looks like because she's with Jim Mitchell. That's going to be a whole separate entity that she's going to be a part of. So I don't see that OVE connection happening with her. No, I, I, I really be, think. Sense, though. And we'll, we'll get into this more later, but I really think Nevaeh is coming to join OVE. I mean, it makes too much sense storyline wise mm-hmm. with Sammy calling out the knockouts division. It, it makes too much sense. And Tessa <laughs> randomly throwing herself into that. So we'll get yeah. in, we'll get into them in a little bit. But let's get back to Jessica Havoc. I was really, you know, I don't read spoilers or anything. Um, and you, you said you were at the taping. Yeah, you were, you, you were at it. Uh, you can get into a little more what happened. But to me, uh, I could hear the pop on TV. Oh, for uh, sure. When she came out. And uh, Father James Mitchell releases Sue Young. And Sue Young is all is grateful. And they're obviously, you know, she's part of this whole thing with Jessica Havoc and everything. Obviously, they're going to be some kind of team. And... What I want to say about Sue before I kind of get your just overall thoughts on it is I'm so impressed with the way that they've been able to prolong her character Mm -hmm. and even Rosemary, too. I mean, when you got these characters, these demon characters with face paint and everything, I mean, there's only you you would think there's only so much you can do with them. Uh, Kind of like, you know, if you if you look at, uh, you know, broken, woken, Matt Hardy, whatever, I mean, you know, Impact got a lot of mileage out of that. He goes to WWE, and and he gets almost no mileage out of that gimmick. I mean, sometimes when you've got an outlandish gimmick, it, it can be hard to to really put some mileage on it. Mm-hmm. And they've been doing such a good job with Sue Young. And I was thinking, okay, Rosemary's going to capture Sue. If she's not, if they're not going to team up, I was like, Sue's probably done. You know, I was like, there's there's only so much you can can do with her to prolong that gimmick and what she does and what she brings to the table. I mean, she can't just continue to feud with people and do the same shit. And this was actually brilliant because they released Sue young and now the focus moves instead of Sue and Rosemary, the focus goes to Jessica havoc and Rosemary, which frees Sue young up to, you know, to do something else already either just kind of be there and be a presence, you know? So they're able to really prolong her, which I'm really impressed with, but uh, give me your thoughts overall on, on Jessica Havoc coming down and uh, what the crowd reaction was. The reaction was extremely, extremely loud. People did pop, especially the way she um, 
the way she kind of came out, the, she's using a different music or it's like a remix of her original ones. Nobody caught it at first until she came out and she kind of like brooded at the stage for a second. Uh, and then, yeah, dude, people, people reacted right away. I mean, she ha- you know, Jess is over. And what was cool was uh, we got to the building a bit early. So we were kind of here hanging out with everybody. And I saw her for a bit and my girl went to go talk to her. And just kind of shoot the shit. And I was like, oh, shit, Joan Jess is here. I, I figured naturally it was going to be an OVE thing. I was like, oh, she probably just joined an OVE. And I didn't want to know. My girl talked to her. She goes, oh, Jess is here. I go, yeah, don't tell me anything. Whatever you found out. I don't want to be spoiled on anything. So, um, but yeah, dude, that pop was cool because um, people recognized her right away. They took to it, right? It wasn't like, you know, sometimes you have a debut or a re-debut and half the crowd doesn't know who you are. Like in this case, they all knew who she was and they were all like, oh, shit. Okay, wait, what's going on here? So it was it was a great response, and uh, yeah, the in ring I agree with the punches stopping thing. It's like she's not supposed to be supernatural, so where's that coming from? But uh, yeah, I mean, it, I felt like it made Rosemary look a little weak, you know. I mean, yeah, we're trying to get Jess over, but it shouldn't just be that she's able to stop Rosemary's punches. Like it should didn't have it could have been something else, is what I'm saying. But um, overall, very cool. I'm a I'm a big Jessica Havoc fan. I do work alongside her in Chicago quite a bit too, so. Uh, maybe a tad biased, but I think she's a great addition. I was, I've been waiting for this re debut. I was like, it's inevitable she should show back up here. And so I'm glad she is. Yeah, you're right. It was inevitable. I think a lot of people were waiting for it. And the day finally came. I liked Rosemary's reaction to it, where she's kind of looking around like WTF. Like that was a good reaction that she had. And uh, this, this is going to be really interesting. Hopefully they can. I keep you throwing this word mileage around, but hopefully they mm-hmm. can get some real mileage out of this. And these two aren't wrestling next week. You know, don't, don't, don't rush it. Uh, yes. You know, g- yeah. give us something with someone like Jessica Havoc. Like you, you have to make the, uh, the appearances, the matches a little special. You can't just throw them out there right away. I mean, maybe give her a couple jobber matches or, or something like that. But this is, this is going to be interesting. I, I cannot wait to see what happens. I, I was really excited when I saw this from home. So um, I'm glad it, I'm glad the people in the arena, arena liked it. Yes, absolutely. It, it went over very, very well, which was cool. But yeah, I, I agree. Let's not rush it. Let's, let's take our time and let it, let it breathe a little bit because that's one thing impact sometimes does. They rush, like she'll debut and, and they'll put the match on in a week. And it's like, all right, let's, I don't mind waiting for this match to happen. I, I'd like to see some more interaction before they actually touch. So hopefully that works out, but um, we'll see. Wait and see what happened in New York. So Impact plus flashback. I know I haven't podcasted in a while. I'm tired of beating this dead horse. I don't enjoy watching them. I probably never will enjoy watching them, but it was Rain versus Shane Douglas, uh, hair versus hair match. This was the first time I watched Impact on Twitch just because I haven't been catching the show as it airs in forever. And I enjoy that they have Melissa Santos during the commercials doing her thing mm-hmm. um did, did you watch it on twitch or do you watch it the next day some other way i usually watch on twitch i just haven't the last two weeks because i've been traveling but i don't know if you've seen one of the biggest uh running jokes is that it's melissa santos versus technology so uh because a lot of times she'll come into the twitch break and her headphones won't be working or she'll be talking <laughs> and we can't hear her, or there's like a bunch of noise and it's like what the hell's going on, man? <laughs> you know, like every week she's got some issue, and it's just an ongoing joke in the in the in the chat. And one of the things we, you know, I personally, I mean, since you and I and and, and Kyle and our channel here, we look at it from a more uh, more presentation level. It it sometimes to me didn't look as good because she'll be in her house or like you'll hear like at one point we heard the baby crying in the background. I was like, oh man, this is. I get it. Like she's a host. But it's kind of like, uh, yeah, I want it to look more big time. Like there were times where she did it from a show. She was at Warrior Wrestling here in Chicago and she was backstage. Like she was in, in a secluded area and she was hosting Twitch from Warrior Wrestling. So she was already dressed up. There was a nice room she was in. She's like had the microphone. I mean, she looked better. She did it a couple of times where she was, they were taping in Vegas during a Twitch airing of the sh- a week prior. So she was already backstage with the background and people were coming in and out like, hey, what's up? Catch this on this episode here. And it looked cool. It made it look more, it made it more look more like an event. When she's chilling in her bedroom and it's a dark room behind her and I hear the baby crying, I'm like, oh man, come on. that's not what I want for impact. You know, I want a bigger feel to be uh to for I want Friday to feel more like an event. And when we're going to her house, and it's like, all right, what are we doing here, man? <laughs> I mean, we even pitched uh 
uh, real side note, Beacon, not to throw off the, the flow of the show here today, but I even threw up, I even pitched out to our listeners here, hey, man, let Impact know you want you want our show, you want the review show to be hosting the in-betweens on Twitch. Like, we'll do that. You know, at least at least you got some people talking about it, and, and we got a loyal listener base that can jump in and interact with us there. But Dennis Farrell of the uh, Wrestling Perspective podcast did not like that very much, and he took a nice little shot at us over here. <laughs> so he's like, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be us. And I'm like, oh, man, all right. I guess this war is on now. But anyway, side note, sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh. I, I even listened to that podcast. I oh, listened to the uh, – and I'm talking about Blue Chew for – 30 minutes to start off the show. So that's... <laughs> yeah, he wants to, he's like, hey, if anyone's going to do it, it's like, we're the most listened to. I'm like, I don't know, man. You guys talk about other stuff, too. We only talk about impacts. So this is more loyal. But nice little exchange online. But, hey, man, controversy creates the listenership in this case. So we'll there see we what go. happens with that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just a side note. I wanted to throw that out there. But um, Melissa's cool. So, yeah, I mean, was this your first time watching it on Twitch? And then seeing it, it was, actually. Um, usually I catch it on Impact Plus. A couple yeah. days later. So it was my first time watching on Twitch. I enjoyed it. And I want to say about Melissa, she does a fantastic job backstage. You know, I did like Mackenzie. I did like Alicia, but she's she's amazing. She's great. Um, she did the ring announcing for A Night You Can't Miss. And she's a phenomenal ring announcer. I kind of wish that, I know she has the backstage role, but I kind of wish they were to use her on the impact tapings. Because this guy they had in Philadelphia was one of the worst ring announcers I've ever heard like he he didn't not that I could do it I'll put that out there right now I, I couldn't I could not do that but he sounded instead of a ring announcer he sounded like someone acting like what he thinks a ring announcer is supposed to sound like <laughs> uh it's funny you mentioned that just a couple hours ago I was with a friend who um was a referee in the business and we were talking about that he's like wouldn't you like to have a set ring announcer every show he goes doesn't that doesn't that help with branding as, as a viewer of Impact, because he was talking about how they have a different ring announcer every city. And I was like, nah, I don't mind that stuff. It's just ring announcing. But then I started thinking about it when I heard this guy. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, like that's a very distinct difference because I hated the guy in Vegas. I didn't like that guy at all. I was like, whoever did Vegas, I did not not enjoy it whatsoever. Uh, I'm like, oh, this guy was better than Vegas. I'm like, yeah, you're right, though, that consistency. Now I can I appreciate why you you used to have a traveling ring announcer you know it makes sense to have a consistent voice who's introducing everything and um yeah you bring up melissa she's already there you know i mean why not but the backstage role is one thing and this would be another but i mean shoot she's already there anyway maybe couldn't hurt yeah i wouldn't be opposed to it especially I mean, she's a hundred times better than anyone they're gonna bring in yeah yeah she's great she melissa is great i i enjoy she's got a good positive she's very positive and, and energetic which as a viewer, it's infectious. You know, you watch her like, yeah, she's really into what she's doing. She's really into the product. She's very proud to work there. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, me too. Shit. I, I love watching this. I, I love being along for this ride with her. That's cool. Yeah. No, it's cool. I, maybe maybe they will, man. I think consistency is one thing that you need in, a, in any product, especially in, in a televised, you know, entertainment medium. So, yeah, in a case like this, if they decide to go with Melissa, I'm not opposed to it. She's off. I mean... A lot of times the ring announcers are off camera anyway, so she could very well do it from backstage and not have to be in ring for it. So yeah, that's totally... very true. Yeah. That's very true. Um, moving right along, they had a Sandman giving Ed, uh, Kenny 2.0 to Eddie. I want to say about this that there was a feud with Killer Cross and Eddie Edwards that they really could have done something long-term and special with, mm -hmm. and instead we just get two quick matches. Eddie Edwards wins both of them, where Killer Cross actually whipped his ass for a majority of that street fight and still managed to lose. Um, I have worn that same exact uh, style of flak jacket, and it actually <laughs> really bothered me that he was... Uh, I mean, this is not Cross's fault. I mean, this is how it was drew up, but it really bothered me that he was selling the kendo stick shots to the, uh, to the, the stomach and the back because you're not going to feel those wearing that. So <laughs> I, <laughs> that was uh, actually really weird. I mean, it actually bothered me quite a bit, but I don't know what, if there is much truth to this whole thing with Killer Cross. He says there's not. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he posted a statement on it, but I don't know if there's truth to him asking to be released or whatever. I mean, he hasn't been on either of the pay-per-views since he's been around. Actually, no, I think he was a last-minute addition to Bound for Glory. But, yeah. you know, he, he didn't get a redemption not redemption, uh, rebellion. Yes, uh, spot, which really bothered me. 
Which yeah, really I think bothered. it bothered a lot of people. And he takes two losses to Eddie Edwards. I mean, and now this feud is done. And this was something that they really could have done something special with. Killer Cross cut some killer promos on this. So maybe there is some truth to where maybe he's not going to be around much longer. Who knows? But He is on New York. He's on those tapings. Um, just some sources I had live. Kyle was at those shows as well. And um, my buddy is uh, the ringside photographer for those tapings. And he Cross is on New York. So he's definitely on the lead to Slammiversary. Uh, I said I asked for no spoilers, so I don't like spoilers. So I don't have any spoilers for anybody, but he's definitely on those tapings for sure. That's one thing I can assure. At least he is. He's sticking it. And like I said, he said there was no truth to all that stuff. Um, my thing is it came out somehow, right? Uh, but then again, I am i don't put too much stock in their cheats. I feel they make up a lot, and they, they you give them an inch to take a mile. Um, but he put out a very positive statement. I have a feeling, though, maybe during the time this was all going on, these tapings is maybe when some of those initial talks started. Maybe they contoured plans in case there was a possibility he was leaving. Because I know, you know, there's been some talk about Scarlett removing Impact from her Twitter bio and not following them anymore because she had requested a release in the midst of all this cross stuff. So I don't know if maybe... It was during all that. They said, we're not going to give this guy too much in case he is leaving. Like, who knows? No idea. But we'll see how it pans out. I'd like to see post anniversary where he goes, because that's going to be the most telling of everything. Right, because Cross has more than done enough to establish himself as a main event talent. And then they they put a lot in Scarlet, building her up in, in a different way. They didn't build her up in ring but they did it through vignettes and backstage work and everything. They, they did a lot to say, Hey, Scarlett's here. Um, mm-hmm. And if it were to ultimately lead to her being <laughs> released here in the near future, it would be a, you know, a lot, a lot for nothing. Yeah. So hopefully they, they're able to figure it out with them. Uh, Madman Fulton had a uh, squash match, uh, enhancement match against a couple of jabrones and pretty impressive. I mean, this guy, this is a big guy, a strong guy. I, I always laugh when he comes down to the ring and Sammy Callahan's riding on his shoulders. I love it. I think I that's freaking it. hilarious. And, uh, you know, Sammy slapping him across the face and everything. It's pretty entertaining television. Uh, not a whole lot to say. Three-minute match. Uh, threw a couple guys around the ring. You got anything on it? Yeah, it was pretty, you know, live it was pretty much just a standard thing. Like, those, nobody obviously put any stock into the into the jobbers there but uh, it was a way to get Fulton to display some of that strength I mean he's a big dude and he's very he, he's very intimidating in person he looks extremely um, menacing in person and I and I do like that I like that he is this giant the way they even formate when they stand together you got you know the Chris on either side same in the middle and then Fulton's in the back this big ass statue in the back almost kind of bringing up the rear and uh, they look good. Like, it's a good look for the faction. So I dig it, man. I think Fulton's a key player for um, for really giving OVE more and more credibility. Absolutely. I'm a big fan. So the match, the next match is Falaba and Scarlett versus Jake and Dave Christ. And I think the only criticism I have to the way that OVE is presented, like, every week I just feel like it's some kind of combination of OVE versus Falaba versus Willie Mack versus... Rich Swan, it just always seems to be the same opponents. Um, and I understand if you got a feud, you're you're kind of mixed up, but I just feel like they haven't diversified OVE into into a whole lot. Like they should be back in the tag team title picture, Jake and Dave, in my opinion. I think this is a really good time actually to give them a run with the belts. You know, I would have rather seen. I, I'm I'm assuming they're building towards LAX and the Rascals of Slammiversary. I I would have preferred to see. Uh, Jake and Dave in this, but um, so follow Bond Scarlet mixed tag action versus actually, is this a mixed tag or what's the uh, yeah, well, it's weird because it's like it's mixed on one side, not the other, intergender, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's it's mixed tag if it's the guys against the guys, girls against the girls, but it's intergender, right? If, the, if they can mix it up, so. As I was saying earlier, Falaba is one of the people who have really benefited from getting a lot of time in the ring wrestling because when he first started off, it was really comedy. He was always yes. losing, which he doesn't win a whole lot now, but they do present him as a pretty legit competitor, even though he is, you know, there's some comedy to what he does. 
uh, this actually this this match was a lot better than I was initially giving it credit for. I'm always very hesitant when I see the the guys against the girls and how they're gonna present that. But you know, Scarlett looked really good in this. She she had a couple spots that were excellent, uh, a couple moves, and um, the, you know the Chris brothers also always look great. Uh, I don't think Dave Chris gets enough props you know everyone's always talking about Dave, uh, jake i think dave chris is awesome i actually uh actually kind of prefer him and uh very good match obe ends up winning this thing and they got some heat doing it too i mean they obe can get some heat they they definitely get the crowd against them yeah. and um i was a little worried that you know if i'm not being a fan for a second and i'm kind of being like the you know uh, amateur booker here. I was a little concerned follow bond Scarlet were going to win. Cause I was thinking they have no business winning this match, but uh, Jake and Dave did win and they're going to attack her after the match, attack Scarlet after match. Tessa Blanchard very randomly comes down and uh, takes out OBE embarrasses them. Of course, Sammy absolutely loses his mind. This seems to be leading up to something. This is where I'm saying maybe Nevaeh Christ is a part of this. You know, they brought Havoc, her tag team partner. So Mm -hmm. it only makes sense. Um, It it looks like right now they're going to do Scarlet and Tessa versus OVE. But it only makes sense that OVE is is bringing some kind of female into this because he's Sammy's like the knockouts division, this and this and this. So, yeah, you know, uh, what do you got on this whole thing? Well, he's targeting. Yeah, he kind of threw that shot out there to target the knockouts division, kind of give them a a zing like, you know, I'm sick of them being or Tessa getting all this attention and all that. So obviously they're setting something up with that, right? Like that looks clearly like, okay, we, we planted the seed with that and then we'll take it from there. So uh, that's where then that, that explains the Tessa thing. But going back to the match, uh, one of the notes I had taken on this one was Fala. Like you brought up a good point. He went from a comedy character to like, man, this dude, this dude can give in time. Like the dude can work. And I was like, for his size on the his, I'm like, his cardio is fantastic for his size. Mm-hmm. And the the guy just like, when given the platform, Fala has delivered. And I think it's the whole this whole momentum shift with him started when he got that that uh, title shot against Austin Aries last year. And uh, everybody was just like, whoa, where was this guy this whole time? Because I remember that match even got put on like match of the year contender right. during the Impact Awards, right? Because so everybody was like, where the hell did this all come from, right? Because a dude can work. So he has, and then this story here has really given him a shot to um, to really display that even more. And I was like, follows almost like a more agile Yokozuna at this point. I mean, the guy is is he's a big dude who can who can hang with with guys half the size, which I really appreciate about him. I thought that was a lot of fun to watch him um, to watch him tell a story because it was great storytelling in this match, especially with him and, and Scarlet and everything. So. Definitely great, uh, great display of what Fowl's capable of. And then, yeah, the the whole thing with the Chris being in the title picture, I would like to see them back in, too. One thing OVE has not gotten is a title. And Sammy, I feel like it was such a missed opportunity for Sammy not to take the belt off of Rich because that could have been like a crown jewel for them to kind of be like holding the X Division title in in the OVE camp. And it was built so well. That feud was so great. I'm like, it would have been perfect for Sammy to have that belt. And they could have just kind of worked around that. You know, they protected him and his henchmen did this and that. And then maybe the Chris win the tag belts. And then you really give OV a lot of credibility if you start putting, you know, more belts into the faction. So I, I feel it was a missed opportunity with that. So given that, I, I we definitely need somewhere, it, whether it's the Chris now to take the, the tag belts at some point, I'd be totally okay with it. Because I feel like they haven't had it in a while either. And they haven't had it during the new regime either. They've had it during the tail end of the GFW, you know, and Dixie and they had the Dixie Corrigan and the GFW era. Like they kind of had it at the tail end of all that. So um, not during this like new momentum shift that Impact is on now. So we'll see, man. I think I think it's about time. I think it's about time. Agreed. And yeah. I also agree. Missed opportunity. I thought Sammy should, I think Sammy should be the X division champion right now. Yeah. And after all, you know, there was a period of time. I mean, he, he got a lot of momentum and you would think, Hey, throw a title on this dude, but maybe purposely they were like, okay, we're not just going to throw a title on him. Cause maybe he doesn't need a title. He's doing this and this without it. So, um, but hopefully, hopefully OBE sees, see some gold soon. That would, um, 
I, I really like that. Yeah. Um, so there was a backstage. I don't usually like to talk about the the backstage interviews and everything a whole lot, but uh, I actually I wanted to make a comment. Willie Mack cracks me up doing his backstage it. interviews because you've got Rich Swan who's talking like a wrestler, you know, like next week when you and I go face to face, <laughs> this and this and this, and then you got Willie Mack talking like you and I are talking, like just total like when your ass get in the ring with me. You know, he, he's just talking like a normal dude. Um, I love it, man. That's oh, one of my man. favorite when things he about it. At the end when he was like, uh, when Johnny Bravo was out there with the X, and he's like, <laughs> I know what you're gonna who, say, who's dude. that man holding the X, dude? <laughs> fucking dying. The, the, I, the, the delivery of that cracked me up. Yeah, I love it because he, he is, he's just that dude. He's just like that guy. Like he, he's basically that friend you bring over, right? And who watches wrestling with you. And that, how that, like, who's not really a hardcore fan, like, who's not really in on everything, but how your buddy would talk or just casually watching, like, man, what's, I'm going to whoop your ass. I mean, just break, matter of fact, like, man, I'm going to I'm gonna straight whoop your ass. That's how it's going to be, man. Just straight, I mean, ain't nothing about it. You interfere in my match. There ain't nothing about it. We're just going to take care of business. Like, that's just how, like, I got friends who talk like that. <laughs> that's just right? how they exactly. talk. Exactly. <laughs> it's like you're going to have a backyard match with your buddies and you're like, hey, man, I need a partner. I know you don't watch wrestling, but we're going to cut this promo real quick. So act like you're a wrestler and, you know, and and, and you're, you're Rich Swan. You're like this and this and this. And then Willie Mack come on like, oh, that's great. That's kick your ass. I love it, dude. I love it. Um, so. It's great. No, it, it was a lot of fun. And one one backstage thing we left out real quick. I just want to touch on it. The Rascals, the smoke room and uh, and how they were just kind of getting ready for their match and Trey being drunk and everything. I just love the smoke room segments very much. I I'm a big fan of them. I think it's got, it's been great to display their acting abilities, especially uh, Zach. I think Zach was a very underrated actor. Like he is in all these um, training montages and everything. The guy has been, he's been the breakout to me as far as really taking advantage of every camera moment he gets. So huge fan of that. I, I just wanted to touch. I know we, it was earlier in the show. We skipped it for a second. But I just wanted to mention that. I think I skipped it purposely because yeah. I cannot stand those segments. <laughs> I hate I them love so them, much. I'm 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 a mark for them. I, I don't know what it is. I just I just laugh. I love the canned laughter. I'm a big sitcom guy, so maybe that's what it is. I just love. <laughs> I can't get enough of this. The canned laughter doesn't doesn't match up with what they're saying. That's what <laughs> drives me nuts. That's what makes it funnier to me because it's just like, what the hell is it even going with? You know, I just love it. It's it's just so. It's just so bananas, and I'm like, all right, whatever. This is this is great. I may, maybe it makes maybe you got to be stoned for it to make sense. I don't know, man. Yeah, it um, must be. So I, I understand people dig them. I'm I'm not into them purposely. So um, we move on, and we got another knockouts match. So the the knockouts, pretty much every single knockout, just about with the exception of like Madison Rain and uh, Alicia Edwards were on this episode. So Jordan Grace versus Kira Hogan. This match was so good. Uh, I don't know if you agree. Like I, I, I love this match. Um, they really, they're doing a good job with Kiera as a, as a heel. I'm not. I've never been like a huge fan of hers, uh, just for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But it seems like she's gonna come into her own more as this heel. Because I think, I think a lot of the early stuff with Allie, I thought her acting was really bad. You know, like Allie, I'm your friend. Um, I just. Oh yeah. I was, I think that's what was kind of like turning me off early on. Like I felt like that role was actually written for somebody else, but they left the company or something. So they like put her in there. I mean, that's how it came off for the longest time. Makes sense. It makes sense. So, she, would, she would look like she was thrust into something that she wasn't ready for. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So uh, that's why I was just kind of like, ah, I'm not, I'm not really feeling her. I thought with this match here was actually going to win because I felt like, okay, she's got this new heel persona. Like they got to get her. A victory, but you know they really stay true to form and saying, "Hey, Jordan Grace is pretty much unbeatable." And um, the way they ended the match, where she hit the Grace Driver, you know, seemingly out of nowhere, I thought that was a really great ending. And this was just amazing. I, 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 I love the match. I mean, the first thing I said was like, "This is the best." I don't care what anybody says. This is the best women's division in wrestling. And, you know, I'll say that people are like, oh, they don't have Charlotte. I'm like, fuck Charlotte. Like, yeah, she does the same moves every match. And um, I'm not even going to get into all that. But that whole thing they got over there is still three, four, five women and then a bunch of whatevers. You know, like right. with the knockout division, they're, they're, you know, they're really trying to make every single woman matter in the division. So I, 
I still stand by that. I still stand by it. They're the best. What do you got on Jordan Grace versus Kiara Hogan? I'll tell you what. I, I was one of those people when Jordan first came in, I was not on board. I was like, eh, I'm not really digging it. Even I, I, I was even criticizing the music that she has. Like, it doesn't even fit her style. You know, I was like, I was very hard on Jordan Grace initially. Uh, she is a perfect example of someone who's won me over every match she has more and more and more. Uh, this match here in particular, definitely uh, definitely enjoyed it because I like that they have some story built in. Kira is getting a chance to shine. Uh, you know, we forget Kira is young. I think she's like 21, 22. Yeah. And the only way you're going to get better is, is camera time with a story to go with it. And she's she's starting to get that more. She's starting to get a chance to kind of like be on her own. Now she's like her own heel. Before she was, you know a sidekick to Allie and she was a side piece to Rosemary. Like she was a side character in that whole thing. Now it's like, okay, you are a heel. Now you sell it. You sell us on your hero persona. And she was doing it. She's good. And I do like that. Jordan. Yes. Jordan is, it's not that easy. Kira. Jordan is an unstoppable force. You're not going to beat her that easily, but I like that. It, it elevated Kira though. This, this match did a great job in elevating Kira to a more believable level, which I appreciated that. Exactly. It, it, it definitely did that. And I saw if you go to her Twitter, she's got a new look instead of the red fire and everything. It's actually blue. Mm, uh, OK, l- looks pretty badass. So um, she actually just tweeted that out, I think yesterday. But she her her new look is uh, probably for these next next set of tapings. That's really cool. Great. So um, it was it was a necessary heel change. And it was funny because years ago when they brought her and Hanaya the Huntress in, Hanaya was supposed to be the big signing and Kier was kind of like, well, who's this? You know, right. Uh, they right. Had just had MJ Jenkins on the roster who they did nothing with and then released her. And it almost seemed like maybe Kier was going to head that direction, too. And um, no. And she she's really um, made it her own. And if I don't know if you ever saw there was a video that resurfaced. I shouldn't say resurfaced, but it surfaced of uh, Kiera's YouTube channel. But when she first started wrestling and getting into oh, wrestling yeah. and she was putting over the knockouts division when she was like a teenager. Oh, I thought it was adorable. I was like, the thing was, was really cool. I saw that. And at the, around the same time, Ethan Page had tweeted something out about uh, he's like, what you have now is like you have a generation that grew up on Impact because now Impact's 16 years old. I mean, Ethan Page is 29 or 30, like. He was a teenager. Like, he was at the age when Impact was coming out, you know, in the TNA days. You know, Kira was a kid under 10 years old when this company was coming out. So you have a generation that the two companies they knew are three, I should say, if you want to include Ring of Honor. You know, it's like it's WWE, Impact, and Ring of Honor. These are the companies they grew up with, as opposed to, like, myself. It's like, for me, it was, you know, the NWA, WCW, WWF, ECW. And then as I got into my 20s, it was TNA and then Impact. So that, that's this generation now. So I thought it was awesome when she put that video out. You know, I was like, oh, that's cool. Because to her, that was her, that was her goal, was to be a, a knockout. And I thought that was really cool, man. I, I enjoyed the fact that you have someone there who, who always wanted to be there. And that, that, that makes me like her more, to be honest. Absolutely. And that was very similar with Allie as well. When I had interviewed her a couple of years ago, she said one of her goals was to uh... – to be a knockout and even speaking of MJ, her, one of her goals was to be a knockout also. So it is, it is cool to see that. Yeah. Um, we get LAX in a clubhouse. Now, you know, I talked about the rascals in the, in the tree house or whatever. I, I'm not, I don't really enjoy the LAX club clubhouse segments either because I think LAX gets a little overexposed and uh, I enjoy them just as much as anybody else, but we just got to be careful with LAX. I mean, they, they run through everybody, everybody, you know, and it, you're you're going to kind of get to that point, like, what the fuck do we do with LAX at this point? You know, I just it's, I think it's OK sometimes some some week to just not give us LAX like this. You know, let's pump the brakes on it a little bit. But they're they're doing the clubhouse segment and they're overlooking. Um, I was going to say OVE overlooking the rascals. Uh, this this whole flask thing um, with with Ortiz, the moonshine, whatever you want to call it. It seems like they just started bringing, maybe I'm wrong because, you know, I, I kind of got jumbled up watching these episodes. I feel like they just brought that into these segments here recently. And it's the beginning of something because it's start. It, it, it's, they're focusing on it quite a bit. And I guess where I'm trying to go with it is, is maybe this is going to lead to Ortiz with a drinking problem or something like that. 
Well, I think I think what they they're trying to show that they're so casual. Yeah, the 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 flash thing. Yeah, it, it is a little weird. Like it it got a lot of shine, especially on these tapings, um, and then with Trey later on, as we're gonna get to. But I think they're just showing that they they're starting to rest on their laurels a bit. Like yeah, like you said, they're they're just plowing through everybody. They can get through everybody, so it's like ah, you know, there's no pressure. Like we can drink, we can go in their buzz. Like we're good, you know, whatever. Um, and Ortiz was always the goof anyway, right? They always kind of made him the goofier one out of the two. Right. Uh, ever since when he was doing the bartending thing and he's, you know, more of the screamer and stuff that, you know, the, uh, what the, what the, was it the chancla, right? Is that the, uh, the slipper yeah. when he pulled that out and everything? So like <laughs> he was always the joke, one, jokier ones. I think like it's some more like they're just playing up. Like he's just way casual and that plays into what we're going to get to in a little bit, but uh, as I don't mind it. I, I just I'm a big fan of these just because I feel like it creates diversity. Like not everything is then based on in ring. You have some things based on character. You can invest in the character. Like I like Ortiz a lot because he is goofy. I was like I, I dig it because he's he's funny to me, and I enjoy that about him. So I get more invested in the in ring work because I'm like I like that guy. He's just likable to me. I I dig what he does more because I find his stuff hilarious in in the clubhouse. So things like. For a guy like me who even looks at it from a very analytical point of view, even working in the business, it's that stuff is very enjoyable to me. Very, I, I like it. I'm a big fan. Yeah, I, I do like LAX. I just want to point that out. When I say – I always want to point that out. When I say I know I don't like these segments and this and this, it doesn't mean I dislike oh, for LAX. Sure. You know what I mean? I just have – I just don't really – always enjoy those a whole lot. But there's definitely some some focus on this Flask thing. And, and even you know to your point – they're 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 being overconfident and they even said it you know uh decay ove the ogs and i think he threw a four team out there so i mean they're even put that out there putting that out there that they have they have run through everybody uh the lucha brothers was the other one so um yeah they're kind of like who's next like like we've done it all man we don't what do we have to prove now and that's what conan's like don't take it so lightly you guys you guys being too casual we're like you're up next like what do you guys you guys are too relaxed right now. I'm not. I'm not happy about this. Like, they gave that indication that Conan's seeing it. Like, you guys are getting a little too easy on yourselves here. You know, so let's let's tighten the ship a little bit. Right. So yeah, I mean, I, I see where they're going with it for sure. And then, I wanted like, to say too uh, how how odd it is that uh, Johnny Impact all of a sudden is very content with challenging for the X Division title despite not getting any kind of rematch for his his world title. But I mean, how many shots did Brian Cage get at the world title? How many shots did LAX get at Lucha Brothers? How many shots did Tessa Blanchard get at Ty? Like, it seems like everyone is getting these rematches, rematches, and then it's like the world champion is not getting his rematch, and he is good to go wrestling for the X Division title. So. I, I, just, I think we're, it, we're the unfortunately we're in such a tough spot with Cage being injured. That's the thing we we almost have to. They they're almost they're, they're almost trying to kind of blind us with footwork, you know, a little smoke and mirrors because take our attention off of that fact that you just pointed out because we have no champion. He's not, he wasn't even at Philly at all. I was like, man, even I was thinking like, walk the guy out, you know, he can cut an in ring, in ring. I mean, I'd rather have my champion there than not have him there. So my thing was like, he's not even present besides like some pre tape segments. What's the best you can do to take the focus off the fact that giant didn't get that, that shot. And still build a title picture, because the last thing we want—I mean, I don't know about you, BQ, but the last thing I wanted to see was Cage and Johnny at Slam Anniversary with the rematch. I did not want to see that. Oh yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> and that seemed like the soonest we're going to get Cage with with proper healing time would be basically a Slam Anniversary. So, with that being said, it's like do you just kind of build a new guy over the next month and um, and take it from there and 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 see what happens and just kind of put shift the focus fully. On that, and then while at the same time they planted the seed of this X Division shot when Johnny won that Ultimate X at United We Stand, so we, which I thought was a weird result too. I was like, that's kind of weird that they put, they gave him that title shot because it was almost like foreshadowing that he's going to lose the world title and go for this right away. But I'm kind of glad they did now because now at least Johnny focused over there. We can look at Cage and we all get in a different light. So it, it in a roundabout way, it kind of worked out. For the for the sake of an injured champion, let's say that. Yeah, when I was trying to catch up on Impact, you know, because I was several episodes behind, it was very difficult for me to find out 
where my place was because I just felt like I was just consistently getting Cage versus Johnny versus Moose versus Cross and LAX versus the Lucha Brothers. I'm like, these guys are wrestling so much. Oh, yeah. I was like, I don't even know what episode I'm on. (laughs) Yeah. For a while, man. I mean, I love how well Cage and Johnny was built up. I think to build up for months is fantastic. I like it. I mean, it was done to the point where I was dying to see that match. I was like, I got to see this match because they have built it so heavily. I need to see this result. Uh, Even though I figured Cage was going to win, but I still wanted to see it. So I thought it was done really well. It was just, yeah, it was a lot of combination of those three, four, five, you know, or three, four guys. So for for many months. But yeah, I know what you're saying. So with that being said, it is kind of refreshing to get LAX versus the Rascals. It's very refreshing. It's very different. These are two baby face teams. So the match itself, obviously, with with these guys going at it, they made it a point to say, hey, Trey's not in the match. Um, the moves were phenomenal. Lot, lots of flippy-dippy stuff, but really entertaining match. And uh, the Rascals ultimately, we're going to say ultimately win this thing. Trey gets in the in the match, hits the, the top rope move, pins Santana, and all of a sudden, these are the new champions. Ref comes down and reverses and says, hey, this guy's not even in the match. Mm-hmm. So very creative way to to end the match without giving either team a loss. Building some kind of storyline moving forward. So now there's kind of a story going here where the Rascals really think they can do this. They could really think they can beat LAX. LAX is kind of, you know, looking down on them. Maybe next week LAX, okay, these guys, you know, maybe these guys are better than we thought. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they're building a program here. But um, your thoughts overall on the match and just the way they ended it uh, with with Trey getting the win, even though he wasn't one of the participants in the match. I'll tell you what, it, it, it's your classic, what they call the dusty finish, right? Like it's the the, the famous dusty roads, dusty finish. Um, the thing was live. If you see the, the response, like live crown went insane for that re- result. And we thought, I mean, I you kind of forgot that Trey wasn't, officially in because it's like this weird free rule that applies to the rascals because there's three of them so everybody just bought into it nobody live was questioning wait a minute he wasn't in the the match we all just kind of took it and you, the pop says it all i mean i'm my, my girl freaks out you can see her front and center she's like oh my god <laughs> like it, it caught us by surprise it was cool uh i did like i like that it 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 showed it proved conan's point like hey lax you're getting too complacent and at the same time it proved that like the rascals are viable contenders. I felt like despite the reversal, it kept everybody strong because it, it, it really gave that, Oh, we haven't had a good dusty finish in a while. So this was cool because it popped. Everybody, yeah, we did want to see a title change as much as people like title changes. At the same time, we love LAX so much. So we're not, we're not upset that they're still champions, but now there's more interest in saying, okay, cool. When we have another match with these two teams, now what's going to happen when we know that it's not going to be Trey interfering? You know, who actually beat him? What did, did the rest of the guys wear these two down and Trey just picked up the scraps? You know, like, or, or was it like, was it all just, just Trey's doing? I mean, you know, it's going to be, you, have, you instantly have built in story through the whole thing. So now the match is, has a lot of credibility going into the next, the rematch. It's going to be interesting to see if they, because these guys are most likely going to mix it up a few times before the pay per view. That's just what, Impact has been doing. Yep. It's going to be interesting to see if if the Rascals swap it up and Trey wrestles one time with Dez or whatever. But for the most part, Wentz and Dez seem to be the team, and then in singles competition, it seems to be Trey. Like they're not they're not switching it up a whole lot. I can't even think no. of a single time it was you know when they were wrestled as a pair that Trey was involved. But everybody you know? forgot that. Nobody thought about it when he made that pin. Nobody. It didn't like. It didn't register for anybody that, wait a minute, this guy isn't a part of that. Like, we all just popped as if that was it. That's the finish. And we all went for it. So I thought it was, it was smart on that regard because they kind of played on everyone's aloofness in that regard. You know, we were just kind of not thinking. And we bought into him making the pin. And you got a pop and you got some, you got to further your story. So I thought in that kind of roundabout-ish way, you, you did further your story. So it worked out really well, in my opinion. I said, we'll see where we'll see where they go with it. Come the New York tapings and the lead to sign anniversary now, we'll see where they take it. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. I, I really wasn't expecting like a long term program between them, but 
pleasant surprise. So yep. um, I, I'm, I think it's safe to say these guys are going to meet up at Slammiversary, but in what kind of capacity we will see. But overall, really good episode. This is, you know, a couple of really strong episodes in a row. Mm-hmm. You know, last last month or last month, or rather uh, last week, I really enjoyed the uh, ECW originals, if you want to call them, versus, uh, you know, Moose in the North. Uh, I really enjoyed that a lot. I didn't enjoy Tommy versus RVD the week prior. I no, thought that I didn't either. was horrible. But uh, Sabu really, really showed something. And, and even to, to further this point, because I forgot to talk on this, Moose did challenge RVD during this Um you know, he seemed to distance distance himself, break off from the north, and now it looks like he's going after RVD. So uh, I think that's actually going to be pretty good. I'm looking forward to that. I like that he, Moose is, I love that he takes that position. I'm Mr. Impact Wrestling. You're not going to come into my house. You're, you're some old timer. You're not coming in, back in here and you're just going to take over. This is a new day. I'm this and this new new sheriff in town. I'm the guy now. You might have been Mr. Monday Night, Mr. ECW, whatever. Uh, but this is I'm Mr. Impact Wrestling. So now let's let's see what you got. I like that. I was really happy with the direction they're taking with Moose. I think that's a perfect spot to put him in as the as the uh, you know almost like the mayor here. Like, I'm the guy who runs this place. I'm the face who runs the place, kind of thing. You know, and I, I like that. And I like that he actually. Gave homage. He's like, don't you know? Don't act, I'm not gonna act like I didn't do the thumbs. You know, when I was a kid, do the thumbs in my in the mirror, go and call myself the whole effing show. Like I was a big RVD fan, you know. But now it's a different time and this and that. So I thought that was really cool. It's a good way to tie that all in. Totally agreed. And Moose has really come into his own with the with this gimmick. Like this is way more enjoyable than him as a uh, baby face. Oh, I'm telling he's, you, he, he's doing a killer job. So him losing uh, at Slammiversary last year and going heel was the best thing that happened in his career. I think that was the best thing you could have done with him. Exactly. Good. After having a really, really good match at Slammiversary, oh, too. So it's great. Uh, looking forward to Slammiversary because they deliver on Slammiversary every year. Bound for Glory is the one that usually ends up being a clusterfuck, but Slammiversary, they deliver every year on this. So yeah. uh, Moose has already said this is going to be the best pay-per-view of 2019, which I think Rebellion is the best. I, I really did like Double or Nothing a lot, but I still think Rebellion was the best show um hands down this year or so slam reversary should follow suit and uh that is gonna do it for our review of impact you got anything else trent you want to say about the episode impact in general me as a host well good to have you back bq i'm sure the people love it there's a even i mean your little return if you guys haven't listened to the return the return announcement uh go check that out i mean even though you're listening to this now but why not give that one some place too but man people were already commenting on your return announcement they were happy to have you back bq uh you know like i said we kyle and i've been have been holding down the fort with the weekly reviews and we've built up a nice great listenership of people who just love to come here to the lounge and, and hang out and talk and, and and kick feedback and stuff so i'm sure it'd be no different now that you're coming back it's going to be great to have you doing you know, the new stuff and, and basically being that that captain of the ship again. So that's kind of it's really cool to see um, see us all kind of coming back together and really settling into those roles more because I know the listeners want it. So I'm happy that you're here, especially at a very exciting time. I think you picked a really good time to come back because this road to sign anniversary is is phenomenal. Philly tapings were great. New York tapings. I've heard nothing but good things coming out of that. Kyle, like I said, Kyle was Adam. He's at Digital Destruction. Uh, that's taping at the, I believe, in Queens. So he is, he's been all over the weekends taping. So he's got, we're not going to do any spoilers, like I mentioned earlier, but we got a lot of inside perspectives going on. And it's going to be a really fun way to break down the week to week as we lead up to the big show. I'm very excited about Slam Anniversary already. I'm, I'm trying to convince my girl to go to Dallas for this because uh, we went last year to, um, where did we go? We went to, no, we went to Slam 17 last uh, couple of years ago. So, Trying to see if she's be, she'd be down to do this, uh, even though it's a day after her birthday. So we'll see if I can work that angle. Probably not. <laughs> we'll see though, man. <laughs> but uh, overall, man, I, I enjoyed. I was at these Philly tapings. I, I had a great time being there. It was a lot of fun to attend live. I would love for them to keep doing Philly because I feel like they have a rebel spirit at Impact right now. They are kind of that ECW like mentality where they're doing what they want to do. And there's a cult-like following that's following that and believing in that very much like ECW did. So I, I like that. It's it's cool because it's um, 
they're hungrier. Like they're working harder. And I always appreciate when you're fighting from from underneath to work harder and harder to really gain gain respect and gain uh, attention. So great set of tapings, man. I'm I'm very proud of Philly. I'm very proud of them for doing it. It's been a it's been a blast. I wish they would continue to to do television in Philly because that's the best crowd we've seen at Impact in a very very long time. Not to say some of these, you know, Las Vegas, pretty decent. New York, pretty decent. Um, I hate that Melrose Ballroom um, venue with passion. Uh, really? I think most most fans seem to. <laughs> Does it? Is it? Let me ask you real quick. Is it the how it's condensed because that hard camera is so like right up front of the uh, to the ring? Is it? Because that's the complaint I've heard that it's way too. It's way too tight of a shot to give yes. it that over. Absolutely. You can hardly see the fans. Um, I, I appreciated that they wanted to do some different camera angles. But if you look at the impact zone stuff, even though the crowd was always dead, it always looked like there were so much more, so many more people there. So that's why I kind of I like the Nashville tapings. I like the Philadelphia tapings because that's kind of how they do it. But mm-hmm. then when you do um, Las Vegas, you do New York, you know, they do the they alternate it to where it's just showing the ramp and just showing the, the small patches of fans to the side and uh i mean there was one episode where there wasn't anyone sitting on one side or or it was only half full and it makes it look like no one's there so um yeah i i'll tell you what i really like windsor a lot i'm a big fan of the windsor tapings and they're going they're going back there in uh july 9th 17th and 18th i believe don't quote me on those exact dates but they're back in windsor windsor to me had a big, big fight feel. And I was in Windsor too. I went to those tapings as well. And that had a really good feeling. I really enjoyed those. I want them to, I'm glad they're going back there. I loved, I love, I think Philly is an option for sure. I think um, the response was good. They, people like them there. So I think they will be going back. No doubt. Yeah. I think, I think it's safe to say it's going to be, it's Windsor, it's Vegas, it's uh, New York, it's Philly. Is there it's a fifth a, one? Uh, no, I think that's it. Okay, it seems like that. That's basically where they're where they're alternating. I was hoping we were going to get a Chicago, you know, but I've heard I've heard through my resources there's there's talk, and they're working on it. So we'll see. Those are my nice. that is my um that's my little bit of insider info. Nothing confirmed. I I listen. That's something that I would probably break if I knew because I'm I'm in Chicago, so I would break that one. But. Uh, they don't have that confirmed yet. They are working on it because they they know it's a big market. They know this is a market they need to be in. It's centralized. They got AAW in Chicago who, I mean, we use, I mean, if you ever go to an AAW show, it's almost like a sub-impact show. There's so much impact talent on it. So the crowd knows the talent. They know the roster. Uh, it, it's a layup to come to Chicago. So there's talk, man. There's definitely talk about them getting to to Chicago. And I think at, maybe at worst, maybe Milwaukee which is uh, about 90 minutes from Chicago. So that maybe that'd be the next option if Chicago doesn't work out. So we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. And I will uh, definitely do my best to be there if that's if that's what happens. So yeah. thanks for checking with us, folks. Hopefully I uh, didn't stumble over myself too much doing this. It's been a minute. But thanks for checking out the Impact Review. Make sure to subscribe, whatever platform you're listening to, if this is your first time. For Trent, this is BQ. Talk to you next time. Peace.